Next Focus brought to you by IG, taking a deep dive into the U.S. GDP number, what it means for markets as we enter another quarterly reading here in the U.S., and a particularly interesting one. We'll get to that context in just a second. But first, uh, we have a reading coming up on Thursday, and you see here a bit of a wacky chart. This is U.S. GDP uh, over the course of the last quarter handful of years, one GDP is reported on a quarterly basis. But there are also uh, forecasts that are given on a monthly basis leading up to that quarterly reading. Two, you'll notice that it's in percentage terms, letting you know on an annual or quarterly basis, whatever it is, but uh, an annual number here, uh, what the expected GDP growth is relative to the last period. And then three, you'll see that 2% is a pretty normal level. Prior to the pandemic, you saw a lot of 1% to 2% uh, values here in U.S. GDP. Since the pandemic, you saw you see the big, crazy downside reading of uh, negative GDP growth at the start of the pandemic, and then a huge upswing, uh, very highly correlated to the stock market selling off in those early days of the pandemic, bouncing back. But since then, regaining that around 2% average, and the expectation for the next reading is around 2.1%. Now, why is it particularly interesting right now for a number of markets, but we will get to uh, stocks, interest rates, and Forex in just a second? Well, I'm going to actually look to the Bank of England, who recently highlighted just how important GDP is and and just how important U.S. GDP is right now, because they listed a reason for not hiking interest rates when they were expected by the market to hike. They actually just paused, and they listed um, you know fear of a slowing global economy, and and here they highlighted the fact that UK GDP. Um, is estimated to be about 0.5%, which is in line with their recent projections. Global GDP, however, is a shade lower than that. Um, and you go to Euro area GDP, even lower than that, and is actually expected to contract in the next quarter weaker than they had thought. And this has had a huge knock-on effect of not only central bankers throughout Europe and Asia as well, choosing to not hike interest rates because they're a little bit iffy on the economic landscape at uh, the moment. But it's also caused a lot of strength in the U.S. dollar and, relatively speaking, U.S. stocks compared to those other markets there. And that's because there in that last point, you see that U.S. GDP at the, some of the highest rates there on a quarterly basis and is expected to increase further. Now, where this could potentially become undone is if that global economic slowdown does seep into the U.S., could be problematic for U.S. stocks, U.S. dollars and interest rates and everything else. But at the moment, you're seeing here in that blue line, the S&P 500 U.S. stocks compared to EWU, which is a U.K. stock uh, ETF, and FXI Chinese stock ETF, huge outperformance so far this year. S&P still up over 10%. UK stocks getting close to unchanged. Eurozone stocks close to unchanged on the year. And Chinese stocks down almost 10% here. And a lot of this has been the outperformance of U.S. economic data uh, compared to these other places. Like I say, it's, it's been a global economic slowdown that the U.S. has kind of been siloed off from. And this also has some other knock-on effects here that can create U.S. dollar demand as well. If you're seeing high uh, relative strength in GDP, you have the initial bit, which is you know greater confidence from the stability of that region, and thus a little flight to quality in their um, bonds and in their currency, um, but then also a potential for higher positive carry to hold that currency long if their interest rates are moved higher with that higher GDP. Um, of course, you know with that carry trade, there's a, a, a fees and, and um, risks associated with it. But the theoretical idea would be that higher GDP, um, 
stronger economy, higher interest rates, and thus um, positive carry to hold that currency long relative to short, say, the yen, uh, where interest rates are still negative, around, uh, sitting around 0%. Um, and, and so, a couple of things teaming together for this US dollar strength that we'll show in just a second, but I wanted to highlight um, the difference uh, across the, here as an example, Japanese economy to the US economy. Japanese GDP has been consistently lower than the US. And you see, since the pandemic, um, it's a similar trend where it was obviously a huge GDP growth period coming right out of that pandemic. Um, but since then, uh, has been lower levels, obviously. But the U.S. GDP since then has printed, you know, as high as six, seven percent and has averaged around two to three percent. Whereas Japanese GDP almost immediately after that huge growth spike after the pandemic has not seen a 2% reading even and has seen actually several negative uh, GDP growth uh, rate readings, uh, whereas the U.S. has seen some negative, but very slightly and few and far between and sitting right next to some a couple of 7% growth rate readings. And you've seen this play out like we just showed in that relative stock performance, but also USD nearing 30-year highs once again against uh, the yen. And then you might say 30-year highs once again. We're, we're right near that 150 price USD to yen uh, that we saw at the end of last year. And those were 30-year highs. So it'll be interesting to see if they can get back to or even surpass to get to new 30-year highs relative to 2022's uh, high prices there. And this GDP reading will be very important for, obviously, directly um, currency and Forex price action, interest rate price action, but also a little bit of a knock-on effect on the stock market as well. If U.S. GDP slips here, then maybe this isn't just an economic slowdown in Europe and in Asia. If it's in the U.S., you could see significant uh, stock losses as that fear builds. On the flip side, if that GDP comes in line or even higher than expected, maybe further U.S. dollar strength and, and U.S. interest rate uh, upside, as we've seen recently, but maybe the stock market picks itself back up and, and says, eh, some of this turbulence in Asia and Europe is one siloed off from the U.S. and is maybe not as uh, big a deal if the U.S. is still able to grow consistently around 2 uh, percent and higher in its GDP. Uh, but we'll see very interesting stuff and very important data point coming out of the U.S.